Hello, and welcome to this video for Physics 131 on interpreting probability and a new way to look at the ideas of mean and standard deviation. By the end of this video, I hope that you will have a bit more practice on interpreting probability and be able to calculate averages and standard deviations of events where not every outcome is equally probable. Let's begin by giving a little bit more thought to the idea of probability that you've explored in some of your readings. The probability of an event is the fraction of time it occurs if the process is repeated an infinite number of times. For a coin, for example, if we flip a fair coin an infinite number of times, we expect that one half of them will be heads. Similarly, for a dice, we expect that if we roll it an infinite number of times, one sixth of the rolls will be a two. Colloquially, the higher the probability, the more likely an outcome is to occur. If one event does not affect the next, then we say that the events are independent. In this particular course, we will only be dealing with independent, mutually exclusive events. Let's begin by thinking about an example of interpreting the idea of probability. Say you roll a fair dice. What is the probability that you will roll a six? Well, of course, the answer is one out of six. If you were to roll the dice an infinite number of times, that you would observe that one-sixth of the rolls would, in fact, be a six. Now, let's say you have rolled a dice three times, and the result of each roll has been a six, i.e., you have rolled three sixes in a row. What is the probability that your next roll will also be a six? Well, the answer to this is still one-sixth. Each roll is independent of the previous, so your probability of the next roll being a 6 is still 1 out of 6, regardless of what has happened in the past. Dice don't have memory, they don't remember, so the odds of your next roll being a 6 are 1 out of 6. Now with this idea of probability, let's move on to thinking about how to calculate means of events with differing probabilities. Consider the following set of measurements for the height of the library, as measured in meters. 88, 87, 88, 90, 90, 88, and 85. We know how to calculate the average of a set of numbers. You add up all of the numbers and then divide by the number of measurements. In this example, we would add up 88, 87, 88, 90, 90, 88, and 85 and divide by 7 to get an average of 88. But we see in this data set that each result appears to not be equally probable. 88 occurs 3 sevenths of the time, and 90 occurs 2 sevenths of the time. Well, we can deal with this as we just did by adding all the numbers up and counting 88 three times, or we can readjust our definition of average to include the idea of probability. In this new definition, we don't just add up the events, we add up the probability multiplied by the value. So we take each value, multiply by the probability, and then add to get our mean. In this example, we say that the probability of 88 is 3 out of 7. So we multiply 88 and 3 over 7. The probability of 90 is 2 out of 7, and so we multiply these two numbers together. 87 and 85 both have probabilities of 1 over 7, and so we multiply 87 and 85 by 1 over 7. If you turn this out in your calculator, you will see that you get the exact same result of 88. So clearly these two methods yield the same result. However, the second is more powerful if we don't know the full data, but say only know the probabilities of different outcomes. Clearly these two methods yield the same result, However, the second result is more powerful if we don't know the full data, but only the probabilities of the various outcomes. Now let's move on to thinking about calculating standard deviations of events with different probabilities. Here in this table, I have given you a list of values and their probabilities. What is the standard deviation of these data? Well, in our formula for mean, all we did was we changed the one over n to the probability of a given event. You would do the same thing for standard deviation. You do the same thing for standard deviation. 
instead of multiplying by 1 over n out front, you bring it inside the sum and multiply by the probability. So now this equation says take each event, subtract the mean, square it, multiply by the probability, and add them all up. And that will give you the standard deviation squared. Let's test this formula using these data. We would begin by calculating the mean itself, because the mean is an element of calculating the standard deviation. So to calculate the mean, we say the mean is the sum of the probability of an event multiplied by the value. In this particular case, we know that let's carry out this calculation for these data. So in this case, we have 0.2 times 2 plus 0.4 times 4 plus 0.1 times 6 plus 0.3 times 8. You add all these various things up and you get an average of 5. So now that we have a mean, we can proceed to calculating the standard deviation. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to add a column to my table and say x minus average for each value. So 2 minus 5 is minus 3, 4 minus 5 is minus 1, 6 minus 5 is 1, and 8 minus 5 is 3. In our definition of standard deviation, we care about this value squared, so let's continue and add yet another column, squaring 9, 1, 1, and 9, getting rid of the negative signs as intended. Now we want to add, now we want to multiply each value of x minus mu squared by the probability. So I'm going to add yet another column, probability times x minus mu squared. For the first one, I'm going to multiply 9 by the probability of 0.2 to get a quantity of 1.8. Next, I'm going to multiply 1 by 0.4 to get a probability multiplied by x minus mu squared of 0 0.4 to get a value to get a value of 0 0.4 and continuing on 0 0.1 and 2 and 2.7. Adding all of these numbers up, as instructed, gets me a standard deviation squared of 5, turns out. Turns out that for this data set, the standard deviation squared and the average are the same. That will not generally be true. I get the standard deviation itself by taking the square root of the standard deviation squared, giving me a standard deviation of 2.24. And this is how we use this expression. In summary, the probability is the frequency something occurs after an infinite number of trials. And colloquially, we say that the higher the probability, the more likely a given event is to occur. With this idea of probability, we can adjust our definitions of mean and standard deviation by swapping out the 1 over n out front and instead multiplying inside the sum by the probability of each occurrence. This concludes this video.